Then Saul struck down the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He captured Agag, king of Amalek, alive and devoted all of the others to destruction with the sword. Verses, uh, and that's 1 Samuel 15, 7 through 8, and that's verses 1 Samuel 27, 8 through 9. Now David and his men went up and raided the Geshurites, the Jerusites, and the Amalekites. 1 Samuel 30, <clears throat> verse 1 and verse 17. Uh, on the third day, David and his men arrived in Ziklag, and the Amalekites had raided the Negev, attacked Ziklag, and burned it down. Uh, I think it's claiming the Amalekites are wiped out, and if so, if they're wiped out by Saul, how are they still there when David is there? But uh, without yeah. looking at more context yeah. or anything, I'm just thinking, okay, he could have, like, you know, it could be ancient Mesopotamian Near Eastern practice to have hyperbolic language. Of, yeah, he destroyed mm -hmm. them. Or it That's could be even if the if there was a entirety of some segment of population, it could be like military age men, mm -hmm. or you know, and just because they're wiped out doesn't mean every single Amalekite is wiped out. Yeah. Well, and does we it actually... does it really say that they're all wiped out? It says they were all devoted to destruction with the sword, but that doesn't. But that was just a command that they that they kill them. It's not a. Um, declaration that they were all killed right perhaps i've heard the whole hyperbolic thing a lot um i think that makes sense and actually last stream we covered a similar one about a guy named haman it was haman an agagite that was the contradiction and it's the same kind of thing like did the amalekites get destroyed or would were there some left and um yeah in that one we were talking about the idea that Perhaps only the guilty ones were destroyed. Um, uh, yeah, there's a precedent in Joshua of the Israelites after being told to destroy the northern cities, sparing those that made peace with them. Even th So even though they were all devoted to destruction, only the guilty ones were destroyed. The ones that repented weren't destroyed. So it's kind of a mix of what both of you said, where you can have it be commanded that these people are devoted to destruction but then some of them repent or whatever some of them are innocent and they just aren't killed i i don't see that this is a contradiction what what level of detail are we really expecting from every passage in scripture do we need mm -hmm. to know every tiny little detail or can we have yeah, it's <clears throat> like somebody went through with a magnifying glass just trying to find a contradiction you know yes i'm an yes. attorney and so i can see when it's like Oh man, this is just somebody just trying to find something. <laughs> that, that's what it well, feels I, like to me. I've seen I've seen Muslims yeah. say like, "Oh, the Bible has fifty thousand contradictions," and what they mean is there's variance in the manuscripts. It's like, come on. Now.